as published on nondetail.com. Save up to 40% of vaccines plus avoid those blood clots, how? First let us talk about saving vaccines, this may well be the most important point in India today, due to the shortage of the vaccines. Prime Minister Modi has emphasized about the vaccine wastages in this video. एक विषय वैक्सीन वेस्टेज का भी है एक भी वैक्सीन की वेस्टेज का मतलब है किसी एक जीवन को जरूरी सुरक्षा कवच नहीं दे पाना इसलिए वैक्सीन वेस्टेज रोकना बहुत जरूरी है COVID-19 vaccine wastage was as high as 37% in some states towards the end of May. While vaccine shortage has hampered COVID-19 vaccination programs in several states, vaccine wastage was as high as 37.3% as per the Union Health Ministry. Immunization centers in several regions shut down after stocks ran out. The weekly pace of vaccination has declined to nearly 60% of what was seen in the week after June 21st, when the center entirely took over vaccine procurement from the states. The slackening has resulted in several states complaining of a shortage and an inability to cater to demand. Among such desperate situations, if we can save vaccine dose up to 40% each time the vaccine is injected, then we should take a note of this news. Reuters reports, Finnish nurse squeezes extra vaccine doses with air bubble technique. Finnish nurse Sari Ruse is teaching her colleagues a vaccination technique that enables her to squeeze more doses out of COVID-19 vaccine vials, helping to stretch scarce supplies and ensure more people can be inoculated. Her air bubble trick makes it possible to extract an elusive seventh dose from vials of the vaccine from Pfizer, one more than the six approved by Europe's health regulator that can normally only be drawn with a special needle and syringe. Such low dead space shot utensils are in short supply, making Ruse trick all the more valuable as countries seek to protect people against new, more infectious coronavirus strains that are spreading a third wave of infection. Ruse technique, similar to one used in Denmark, begins by drawing some vaccine liquid and then pushing it back into the bottle to get rid of air in the syringe. She then draws the exact dose and completes it with sterile air from the bottle. The dose is then injected with minimal waste. The purpose of the air is to push all the liquid into the patient from the needle and close the injection channel so it won't bleed, Ruse told Reuters at Helsinki's Larkso Hospital where she works as a training nurse. Her success has drawn the attention of colleagues at home and abroad who are keen to get more shots from each vial. While the technique is not easy and doesn't work every time, it also makes it possible to draw 12 doses from the 10 dose vials from AstraZeneca and Moderna, the other two shots approved for use in the European Union. The number of extra doses is significant, says Jutta Peltonemi, an infectious diseases doctor in the city of Turku in southwest Finland. Imagine that you were among the extra people we vaccinated today in Helsinki who, without this technique, would have had to wait. These extra doses do save lives, Ruse says. DW has done an excellent reporting on this, do watch it now. And I will provide the link of DW video in the description. The fact vaccines need police escorts is a sign of their value. A hot commodity that also goes to waste. As much as 30% of vaccines are thrown away in some countries. The reasons vary. Storage and logistical challenges, as well as the type of vials and syringes used. But innovations could end the waste. I'm Ben Fazul and nice to have you along. Some countries have had to throw away thousands of jabs. Others, like Finland, are fine-tuning their vaccine campaigns to ensure every last drop counts. It's putting the nation way ahead of others. 
At this vaccination center, around 3,000 doses are prepared and administered every day. It's around 40% more than should be possible with the supplies available. That is because a Finnish invention makes it possible to make a little bit of vaccine go a long way. The person behind the creation is nurse Sari Ruus, who was among those starting COVID vaccinations in December last year. We don't want to throw away any viable vaccine. It has become paramount to use the vaccines as economically as possible, especially after some of them were limited to certain age groups only. Ruus works in a public hospital but volunteered to do extra vaccination shifts. She fine-tuned her technique within the first few days of preparing the doses. Once I noticed that exchanging the syringes and getting rid of excess air in the equipment guaranteed two extra doses of vaccine, I sent an email to our medical director. He quickly contacted health authorities about it. Everybody was very excited. Ruus's technique requires syringes with a one millimeter capacity and small scale. The syringe is first filled with vaccine, but just enough to get the required vaccine dose. In addition, a bit of air is drawn from the vial bottle into the syringe. Finally, the air and vaccine inside the syringe need to swap places before the vaccine is administered. The air bubble technique maximizes the amount of vaccine that is extracted from each vial. For instance, it makes it possible to prepare seven instead of five BioNTech doses, as well as 12 instead of 10 AstraZeneca doses. Health experts made Rosa's technique their official recommendation for COVID vaccinations in the country in January. Despite its benefits, Norway is the only country to follow Finland's footsteps. Medical director Dimo Karpen from the city of Helsinki so far hasn't had the time to advertise the method globally. Some teaching materials have only recently been translated into English. I think this technique can be copied to other countries too. To be able to vaccinate 40% more people than originally projected is simply incredible. For the world to reopen, however, it is not enough to vaccinate people in just one country. While nations such as Finland are continuously easing restrictions, other parts of the world are only starting their own vaccination campaigns. Helsinki City Medical Director Timo Lukarinen joins us. So Timo, should the rest of the world be watching our show very closely today? Truly, we are, we are in a dire, dire need of uh, vaccines and of course, every, every vaccine counts. Explain to us again then how exactly this works. Uh, you're talking about precision equipment, uh, but getting the right type of equipment is extremely important. Starting with what, what sort of syringe do we need? I know there are different sorts of syringes with low dead space, others with high dead space. So a lot of that vaccine gets wasted. It gets stuck either in the syringe or in the needle itself. What sort of syringe do we need, first of all? Uh, with Sarero's technique, it's it's actually a bit easier. You only need small enough syringes. One millimeter syringe is enough because uh, at the end, uh, when given when the vaccine is given, uh, the dead space can be kind of um, it, it doesn't matter when you have the air bubble in over there to be used to push out the whole vaccine from the syringe. And then, what sort of a needle do you need? Uh, it's a it's a small well basically it's it's small small as possible needle needle but which can handle the the vaccine itself. So small diameter, but long, long enough to uh, be able to give it subcutaneously. So uh, there's not a lot of uh, problem with the needle in a way. Mm -hmm. And what about when it comes to the vial that, that you get the actual vaccine in? Yes, the vials are, are a little bit different story. Uh, first of all, if it's, it's of course, uh, you have to be uh, uh, good with the hygiene. But on the other hand, uh, there's a different amount of doses in each vial. You might get six, you might get eight. So you have to be precise that you, you for every dose you take, every vaccine you create from the multi-dose multi vials, you make sure that, that every, every um, vaccination, every jab you're going to give to the patients are truly full 
uh, so that you give the precise dose. So you cannot accept uh, kind of a, a little less than the precise amount of dosing. If, yeah. if there's not enough for big doses, then there's not enough. So there are so many little steps where this could go wrong. Um, and we're talking about human error here. Why not just go for a single dose vial uh, where it's all pre-measured and pre-dosed and, and you have nothing to worry about? Well, uh, multi-dose vials are much easier to produce, I think, and uh, as well as to distribute all around the globally. So uh, we would prefer uh, pre-made, uh, pre-dosed syringes and and uh, pre with needles in, inserted already. But there's not there's no such things at the moment available for COVID. Yeah, it, um, it's all a, a race against time. Uh, in the meantime, mm -hmm. can other countries, I mean, is there anything holding back other countries uh, from repeating what you guys are doing, re replicating the method that uh, you've discovered? Uh, I don't think so. It's basically all, all that you need is the right equipment, precise working, and uh, and uh, the process around the, uh, around the, uh, the vaccination center that you get to uh, take care that you have the precise amount of the type, kind of the patients you are vaccinating, there's enough of them as well. Because if you if you count that there's only five doses coming from the vial and you get six and you only have five patients coming in, then the one dose gets wasted anyways. So you have to take care that there's also patients around. It's also a lot to call for now, but for other vaccines, uh, for global best practice, uh, is there a possibility of maybe someday seeing that needles, the, the right needles are always used, the right syringes are also used, that we, we get some sort of global best practice? Uh, definitely in a way, if, if we use these multi-dose vials, but when it comes to pre-manufactured uh, pre uh, uh, syringes with uh, needles attached, etc. There's no, not much to do anymore. But if you use multi-dose vials, then of course, this kind of a technique can be applied to uh, different sorts of uh, vaccines as well. Okay, fantastic to have you on the show today, Timo Lukarinen, Helsinki City Medical Director and excellent news uh, and nice insights about that uh, local hero of yours. You'll have to uh, pass on my congratulations. Thank you, we will. Now here's Derek Williams with his take on vaccines, vials and waste. Our viewer question. Why aren't injected vaccines manufactured as a single unit instead of having the vaccine and the syringe separate? This is a great question. One that I never really actually considered before. Um, right now, most vaccine manufacturers are, are filling and shipping multi-dose vials of vaccine that contain between uh, 5 and 15 doses. Um, on site at the vaccination center or at the doctor's office, staff then have to painstakingly draw them into syringes in, in a complex, time-consuming series of steps where, where a lot could actually go wrong due to human error. And, and there are a lot of other issues with the vial system, not least that once the seal on one has been broken, all of the doses in the vial have to be used quickly. Um, leftovers can't just be stuck back in the fridge for use later. So, so since everyone is getting their own syringe anyway, why aren't machines just pre-filling them directly as a single unit instead of putting large batches of doses in vials first? Pre-filled single-shot syringes are, are already the norm in some parts of the world for, for vaccinations against other pathogens. But, but there appear to be two primary reasons why the older vial system has been the method of choice so far for the mass uh, COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Uh, the first is speed. Uh, with manufacturers churning out hundreds of millions of doses, it's simply faster for them to squirt 10 at a time into a single vial than it is to fill 10 separate syringes. And with the pandemic in full swing, getting as much vaccine as possible out there um, has been vital. Um, and a second factor is cost. Uh, until now, 
single-dose pre-filled syringes have been more expensive to produce, but, but many manufacturers say that's changing and that, that pre-filling syringes is actually more efficient because then you don't need millions of medical grade glass vials. So, so when demand for COVID-19 vaccines begins to slow, I think that you can expect pre-filled syringes um, to grow in popularity because they have so many advantages. That was about saving vaccine doses. Now let us look at this news published in Denmark. Recently, several doctors have aired a thesis that the vaccination technique may be a cause of the rare cases of blood clots that have been observed in connection with vaccination with AstraZeneca, branded as Covishield in India. The Staten Serum Institute SSI, now recommends on its website a specific technique for vaccinating against coronavirus, which it has not previously recommended. Usually, one does not need to aspirate before injecting a vaccine, writes SSI in its new recommendation, updated March 18. However, based on a precautionary principle, SSI now recommends aspirating prior to injection with corona vaccines. That is, the stamp on the vaccine during the vaccination is easily withdrawn. If blood gets up into the plunger on the needle, it could mean that the head of the needle has hit a blood vessel instead of a muscle. Dr. John Campbell explains us this technique. With the students, is we tend to teach them how to do intramuscular injections with an orange. So I'm going to try and um, try and demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So we'll probably zoom out a bit for this, maybe. Yeah, there we go. So here we have an orange that that represents a muscle. And here we have a here, here we have a syringe and a, a needle. This don't worry. This is quite a lot larger, <laughs> a lot larger than the ones you, you were giving uh, vaccines with. But so to give an intramuscular injection, basically you're going at 90 degrees like that. So you're in. And then what we always teach to do, and I've been doing this for well, 40 odd years now, is we, we draw suck back a little bit like that to aspirate. Now this orange had a little bit of air in it, so uh, a bit of air's come in. That d doesn't normally happen when you're in a muscle. And now once we've aspirated, we know we're not in a blood vessel because no blood's come out. Then we're free to uh, we're free to give the uh, to give the injection. So that's what we normally do. Now, if you are in a blood vessel. So if you if you if you stick that in there and inadvertently you find you've just gone into a blood vessel, then when you aspirate, what happens is if we just imagine that's the blood vessel there. If you look at the syringe, what happens is when you aspirate, of course, you get you get the blood in, you know, you're in a blood vessel and you need to uh, you need to reposition. So that's what we mean by as aspiration. So. When I, when I give intramuscular injections, of course, I always, I always aspirate to make sure I'm not in a blood vessel. However, pending further clarification as to whether there is a link between AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine and the aforementioned serious condition, including whether vaccination techniques may play a role, SSI recommends for the time being, based on a precautionary principle, to aspirate before administration of all the approved and available COVID-19 vaccines. The new recommendation from SSI only applies to COVID-19 vaccines and not the other vaccines.